five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is the Ramble. Look at that. There's New York City below us. I'm Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble, and we go from now until midnight. And hello to all of you. Glad you could join us this evening. What few of you watch this program any longer? Um, I'm. Uh, I got to talk to you about that. <laughs> I gotta talk to you about that, uh, but I will in a second. Let me see here. <clears throat> Let's see. Monday I go for to see the oncologist to see what kind of radiation he's going to give me to get rid of this prostate cancer. Uh, you know, which supposedly, according to my urologist, is just annoying. That uh, it'll I'll, I'll do just fine. You know, I'm going to survive that. It's something else that will kill me first. But, you know, nevertheless, I'm, <clears throat> I'm anticipating it. And I'm anticipating a round of radiation, which I figure if he starts it, probably won't start it till the first of the year because, you know, why do it over the holiday season since there'll be so many breaks and things like that. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I don't know. We'll wait. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what he says. He might say, hey, we'll just wait a little bit and see what happens, you know. So I don't know. It's that's that's got me depressed. Well, I'll tell you what's really got me depressed, okay? And let's talk about it uh, straightforwardly here. I'm thinking very, very seriously about ending the ramble. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, uh, the most important reason is is that nature is telling me you shouldn't do this any longer. Uh, I don't have the strength that I once used to to turn out, churn out uh, two hours of, uh, of uh, video every night right here on GabNet. And uh, if I do, I have to find a way to do it that it will somehow be easier on me physically. Also, if I do have to go through radiation, if I do have to go through hormone treatments or whatever that they give you. If I have to go through any of that stuff, I'm not going to be 100%. And I don't feel I'm 100% now. You know, I've always got my mind on several other technical problems that are happening and things like that. So, I mean, I don't know that I still have the same <clears throat> um, strength, okay, as it were, physically. To, to do uh, uh, two hours of a show four nights a week. I may go down to one night a week or may go to three nights a week or whatever. But that's not the main reason because if I were feeling that this show were, were, were cooking on all burners, uh, I probably wouldn't be so tired all the time and so bored with it. But the fact is that I'm not finding the show very interesting lately and I'm sure you're not either, Okay. And the number of people that are watching us at any given time has gone down. And the number of callers has been abysmally, abysmally slow. Uh, where we used to have to fight off more than 12 people here, now we're lucky if we get more than four, okay? And so I feel if you don't want to participate and you don't want to listen... Um, then I guess the answer here is, uh, why should I be doing this? And that's what I, that's the question I'm asking myself. Why should I be doing this? Um, I have no reason to. Uh, I, um, you know, I did this because I wanted to keep myself in the game. And in the beginning, when we did the citizen panel, it was exciting and it was new and it was vibrant. But now we hardly get any callers at all to make a decent citizen panel. And I, I think that's probably the audience's way of telling me, well, time to pack it in, old man. You know, that doesn't mean I would abandon the, uh, the Internet completely. I would come up with other things to do, and occasionally I would do some shows where people call in. But basically, um, none, of this, uh, none of this makes sense to me, okay? 
just to be honest with you. Uh, and uh, so uh, I am thinking very s s uh, sincerely this time. I've always threatened this, but this time I'm really, really considering that after the first of the year, uh, uh, Damien after the first of the year is only going to go to one night a week, and that's on Mondays. I don't know why he's putting himself off in a ghetto completely. But, uh, you know, I mean, I would rather have Damien on the air here than not on the air here, so I accept his wishes to do that. Uh, but at that same time, I may, in fact, stop doing the ramble. Uh, I haven't decided yet, and this is not written in stone, but unless this show picks up really a, a huge amount within the next uh, couple of days or weeks, uh, I'm going to be forced to just say, hey, that's it. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a glutton for punishment. And why am I putting myself through this for just a handful of people watching it and listening to it? Uh, I've had a good career. It's been uh, been very, very important career, I think, to me at least, if not to other people. And uh, I'm, um, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's time for me just to say that's it and pack it in. All right. And if I feel I want to get my radio jollies, I'll do it in some way because I, I do have my, you know, YouTube channel and I do have the uh, uh, the ability to broadcast live uh, on audio. And uh, so I can I can still do it, you know, in, in a lot of other ways. But I'm just, you know, and I'm sick of the technology going down on me and uh, uh you know all the all the things that I have to do to maintain this, and it it quite frankly is getting me exhausted. Um, so because of lack of participation on the part of the audience, and I want to thank a handful of people like Kathleen and and uh, Phil, who seem to be here almost always now, and uh, Charlie Wallace is here almost always, and uh, uh, Patrick calls in occasionally. Tony calls in quite often. Uh, but it's a handful of people, you know, and um, so uh, uh, a Brie, you know, calls me. But uh, we very seldom get more than four people at a time. We haven't gotten more than four people at a time this week. And that's very daunting to me because uh, really I would like more participation than that. And I would like newer people coming on board and so on. But apparently this show doesn't mean shit to a tree. And... Um, uh, and, and so I, you know, I really think that, that it's time to maybe pack it in. Uh, and uh, I will let you know in the next couple of weeks when and if we're going to do that. Uh, also, because of my health problems, uh, there may be a period of time where I'll just have to not do the show, okay, if I'm feeling too tired or too... They say that um, what you face uh, with uh, the radiation is fatigue, uh, and there are several types of radiation they could give me. They give me the, the one where they send you in to be radiated every day, five days a week for f eight weeks. And that's way too much for me. You know, I don't want to I don't want to have to go over to schlep over to Mount Sinai uh, five times a week. And it's a fast session. It's like 10 minutes under the radiation. But there are other things that they can do. My, the doctor I'm going to, the oncologist, he's a, he, he loves a thing called uh, um, uh, seed, uh, 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 seeds for the prostate, radioactive seeds. They plant these seeds in you, about 200 of them. And then you sit there, hey, they really, that's it. You walk out, you leave the office. Uh, it's an in-out procedure. And um, for the next two months, uh, you... I guess glow in the dark. I don't know what happens. That's one method. I like that method because it's an hour-long procedure. They put you out for it, and as soon as you are able to walk and get off the uh, out of the bed, uh, they send you home. You just go home, and that's it. You know. Whereas um, there's another thing called the uh, cyber uh, cyber knife, where they uh, they do radiation, and it's five hour and a half treatments. Okay, I could live with that one. Uh, and then there's the hormones. Uh, they give you these hormones. It, prostate cancer is one of those cancers that uh, when it's deprived of testosterone, will die, will literally uh, remiss. And um, 
uh, so they, they can give you hormone treatments. Now, they may give me both. They may give me the hormones to make the prostate uh, able to be effectively radiated and to really totally get rid of the whole thing. Or they may not give me that at all. These are just, I'm just thinking of these things. I haven't talked to the doctor yet. He might look at me and say, oh, you've got to have the big deal, you know, and we're going to bombard you with radiation. Or he might say to me, you know, really, we should probably wait six months and see where this is going, okay? Because you have a trace of the, you know, you do have the cancer in you. Uh, most of it is slow growing. There are a couple of faster growing uh, cores that we got. Uh, so maybe we should just wait and see. Because I, you know, I, I would love to ask the doctor the question, if I do nothing about this, what's my prognosis? And he'd probably look at me and say, we don't know what it would be. Might not, nothing might happen and then everything might happen. So we just want to make sure that not everything happens and therefore we do the radiation. But anyway, the, the, it, it, it does cause fatigue and it does cause uh, problems of having to run off to the bathroom a lot, which uh, I just like to tell you to do what you're doing. I got to go pee. Uh, but that might take me out of the uh, out of the uh, loop for a month or so. I don't know, but I have no idea. I have no idea. A lot of people just go right back to work. They get the season, go right back to work. Uh, the guys doing me uh, did Rudy Giuliani twenty years ago with the seeds, and look at him. He's still working, unfortunately. Uh, anyway. Isn't that funny? You know, my life always intersects with history. I, I have no idea how that happens. I often used to say I was always in the right place at the right time. Anyway, so, so I was in the right place at the right time on this one. He's, this doctor is the guy that did uh, Giuliani 20 years ago. So anyway, um, yeah, but we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, overall, I guess what really has gotten to me is I'm just depressed about the program. And I'm depressed about that it's, it's not what I want it to be. Uh, and um, while I, uh, you know, I appreciate the people who do participate, um, I uh, don't appreciate the people who don't, you know. I mean, you would think that there'd be a lot of people who say, yeah, hey, I want to put my two cents worth in. Uh, but I think that uh, a lot of people are reluctant to call the show. Uh, because they feel that, among other things, they're not able to, they, they feel they would not be able to participate in the crowd that's there. That they all know what they're doing and they all put a two cents worth in. They hear somebody like Phil and they go, I don't want to have to go up against that, you know. And um, uh, so people are shy to do it, even though once they do it, they find out how absolutely simple and easy it is. And that, uh, you know, that I, when I see there's somebody new there, I go, hey, what do you have to say? You know, I bring, I bring them out. I make it easier for them. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the problem with that. Um, oh, my back is itching. Hold on a second. Ah, if I were a bear, I'd be rubbing up against a tree right now. You know what I keep on the side of my bed is I keep a back scratcher because my back always starts... Scratching right, right back here in my back. Oh, I'm, and you know it's always where you can't reach it. I'm, I'm, I'm fingering it with a fingernail. Ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Yeah, I, I wish girlfriend were here right now to do that for me. Anyway, so anyway, I, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. What are some of the people saying here? Start at ten, end at eleven thirty. Well, it uh, only half. Uh, you must do the show. If it stops, you will die. <laughs> That's Forbin Colossus. It says, think outside your comfort zone and mix up your style, Alex. Try a guest. You know, people, you uh, don't, you, uh, people don't, uh, you know people, don't you? Yeah, but, you know, it, it's very hard. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I, I get a hold of some people who I've, I've actually had on the show. And they say, yeah, I'd love to do it. Yeah, let me know in a month or so. You know, and then you get a hold in a month and you don't hear back, back from them. You know, when you don't have a show, a national show, when you don't have some kind of program that's regular, like when I was at Sirius XM, nobody wants anything to do with you. Okay? Be honest about it. Okay. So the best part of the show is listening to you ramble. Josh says, I'm calling tonight. Yeah, Josh Wheeler's another one. Josh, when he can, is very good about it. And uh, we appreciate that, John. It's not that I don't appreciate the people that do call. 
Uh, I just wish, A, they would call more often, you know. Uh, and quite frankly, I mean, we haven't gone over, what, maybe six people in quite a while, you know. And that's just saying to me that people are losing interest. It doesn't mean that we don't have some people who are participating, and it will always be there for me, and for that I'm eternally thankful. But that primarily... Uh, that most people are just, uh, they're bored with the fucking show. I mean, well, we got some people listening now. I don't know why. I guess they like to hear an old man gripe. And if I go over to the audio and see how many people are listening there, let me just change this. Uh, yeah, yeah there are a good amount of people there. So, you know, I just, I, I, I guess I've just been terribly depressed by all of it's been uh, been been daunting to me, and um, I don't know what to do about it. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Um, so I don't know what the future holds in store for this. Uh, uh, you know, I will determine that tonight. Uh, probably a lot of people will call, and then uh, we'll be all happy with that. And then um, Tuesday, I'll come in here. Uh, or maybe I won't, depending on the prognosis I get from the doctor. Uh, and um, um, I'll come in here on Tuesday, and we'll be right back to three people. You know, so, I mean, it, it just doesn't... It, I, I don't need your sympathy. Don't call out of sympathy tonight, okay? Just call because you want to. Don't call because I put a threat out there, you know, because that's not going to change anything. So I have to determine whether I want to do this anymore. But that's basically the sum total of it, you know. And uh, I, I don't know what to do about it. So anyway, I'm going to go to the phones. I think I, I, I want to do that early. Watch, nobody will call because it's early, right? I have to wait for my Skype to... Come on, I bought a very fast machine here. It should come up better than that. There we go. Boy, it takes it, it takes its own sweet time. All right, let me go active here. Okay, if you want to call, the, the lines are open now. And uh, sure, tonight we'll get a lot of people because I, I went, got uh, uh, um, all pissed off about it here. Josh, you called, but unfortunately, there you go. There, some, hey, somebody just called and then Josh had a problem. Called, declined. And it said Kathleen Halstead missed call. Uh, uh, let me see here. There we go. There's Josh. Okay. All right, Josh. Uh, let me see. We got you. There you go. There's uh -huh. jo there's Josh Wheeler. He's uh, he's up and running here. Let me uh, let me put him in the uh, Josh Wheeler top slot. There. There we go. All right. Okay, there we go. There you go. Hello, Josh. How are you this evening? Doing good. How you doing? Fine. And Kathleen was calling. There, here she comes. I don't know why the first few times it didn't connect, but you know, it's the it's the gods of uh, it's the gods of uh, of uh, uh, what do you call it of uh, Skype. The Skype gods are are fucking with me. Let me see here. There, yeah. there we go, J Bob uh, J Kazoo, and then here comes Phil, and uh, Phil uh, was about ready to get in here. Let me see here, Phil, uh, scuba diver. I don't yeah. care. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Scuba diver, come on. There we go. Okay, there we go, and uh, we've got uh, so we've got three people, the usual three people. The usual suspects. Yeah, the three people. Um, so it's got to start with one, you know. Huh? It's got to start somewhere. Yeah. A couple more minutes, you'll get three more. Somebody's got an air conditioning or something going. <laughs> My mic's mine. I I can mute here in a minute or go shut the vent off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Give me just a second. It, it's just that for some, you know. I mean, the trouble the trouble with Skype. Is that it would be really nice if they had like a pro version, which I'd be willing to pay for, where I could adjust the audio on each and each and every caller, um, which I could do anyway, but uh, I uh, I I don't have things set up that way. So 
you know. Hello there, Kathleen. How are you this evening? Tired. Why? Why are you tired? Working 12 hours. You work 12 hours? Yep. Why 12 Ch hours? Well, because I wanted to. Do they pay extra for that pay overtime? Oh, yeah, big time. Oh, really? That's a Costco, yep. right? What? Yes. That's a Costco. Yes. They're pretty good, aren't they? So I can buy my son some Hanukkah gifts. Yeah, I mean, but they're pretty good, aren't they? They're decent. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. I mean, Thanksgiving, they gave us a 15-pound turkey. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, full benefits, you can't go wrong. Yeah. You get health benefits and everything. Everything. Do you have to pay for your, your medical? Nope. Wow. Now, that's a good company. Yep. You know? That's why I never feel bad about shopping there, even when the meat sucks. Yeah. Now, I thought they started people out at about 35 grand a year there. Uh, is there much room for growth income-wise? Because yes. in the Bay Area, $35,000 doesn't pay to rent. Well, you know? I'm making more than 35000 a year. Have you been there but a while? But then again, you know, my resume said I worked 27 years at UPS. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go, Phil. Yeah. 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 Hey, there's a future. Hey, I, you know, when I was in Hawaii, there was a big sign at the Wait airport. Hold on. TSA. Hold on a second. Uh, are Yikes. you? Are, are you still? TSA. <laughs> are you still there, Josh? You look like you're frozen. No, I'm here. Oh, you he's look there. frozen. Yeah, oh, there you go. Uh, there he no, he's, is. He's working. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Fine. Uh, no, what you? What did you say about uh, TSA? Yeah, they had a sign in the uh, Maui area, in the uh, Kahului Airport that said uh, TSA agents wanted start at $20.31 an hour. And I said, hey, you know, I could do that. It's a no-brainer job. And uh, between Social Security and that, maybe I could spend my time in Maui. And, uh, you know, Why no stress. So expensive. Yeah, the only trouble uh, is... No, I looked. I, you know, really? gasoline... Regular gas was three ninety one a gallon in Maui. Wow. What do you think regular gas is here? It's four and a quarter. Well, no, in Tracy here, premium is only uh three eighty nine and that's at Chevron. But do you realize what you people are saying? <laughs> do you it's realize only. what you people are saying? Only three ninety one hey, a gallon. What only? Yeah, yeah, when I started driving, it was 19 cents at the independent. Yes, I remember 19 I, And if they were having a gas war, you could get it for 9 cents a gallon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I never got 9 cents, but uh, I, I you know, regularly got 24 cents. And, and that uh, was before they had cars. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I had to wind it up. That's when he had one of those Flintstone things where his feet yeah. were <laughs> I, I did. When I was in high school, I had a 1960 MGA, and nice. uh, on a cold day, they made a crank. You could put it in the uh, front bumper, and you could actually start the car using the crank rather than the button. Yeah. You know, the starter hey, button. Alex, remember my Honda that got stolen in front of your place? Honda? I'm trying to remember. I had my Honda, my little Honda, and it, got, it was tucked between a Porsche and a fucking beamer and i go downstairs and it's gone and i come upstairs you're all uh well maybe it got towed really i call nope didn't get towed and i drove your acura it was now, it was completely and i still stuck. have it wow and now the stupid things go for like almost four to oh. five grand because everybody wants to hop up the engine or something hmm. uh, which kind of honda do you have it's was a it honda a it's a 96. It's only a oh. 1.9 liter two-door. What did we find happened to, did you say? It it was stolen. They found it in China Bay in China Basin. And I remember when I went to pick it up, I had a screwdriver because you know I punched ignitions before. So this was my karma. Yeah. So when I went to get it, I had a screwdriver, and the guy goes, You know, and I was like, Yeah. It's funny. Here in New York, I had a friend who had a horse. And it yeah. got stolen, and about two, about a week later, they found it up on blocks on the West Side Highway with its hooves moving, m missing. Very funny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That's one of my oldest jokes. So. But um bum Yeah. God, yeah. dude, are you... You never crazy? wanted to run out of gas wait in New York. Wait, 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 who are you talking to? 
my son, he's eating everything in my house. And I asked him if he was pregnant. Yeah, I was wondering. He said he's not. So, oh, my God, I'm thankful. Yeah, you're thankful. When your son doesn't get pregnant this <laughs> month, you think you've done your job. Yeah. And he's just flipped me off. Yeah. Right back at you, babe. Okay. Gee, remember right when that was another one? When kids flipped their parents off, they fucking decked them. No. <laughs> if, if I would have flipped my father off. He he would have he would have run after me, uh, no matter how sick he was, and he would have let me have it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you just no, didn't do you know that. What? Bless my mom's heart. My younger brothers, Mike and Eric. Yeah. My mom would tell them to do the dishes, and they'd grab their crotch and say, "Bite it," and then they'd go <laughs> off and do the dishes. And my mom would laugh. Oh, to think I gave birth to them. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably be tolerant of my kid giving me the finger too. But then again, I'd figure he had a reason to. Yeah, yeah so, totally. Yeah, you know, mainly because he's a kid. Yeah, and he's growing up. You know, <laughs> yeah. just uh, uh, don't give uh, don't give the finger to anybody else, kid, because they might deck you. You know, you know okay, Uncle Alex. And the problem also is when he starts driving, if he's in the habit of giving people the finger, somebody might shoot him. I I've mean, already told him that one. Yeah, let you know. alone giving people dirty looks. Don't do it, dude. Nah, you just want to look forward and, you know, it's not worth it. Yeah. Look like a gay pimp. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so, um, you know, I mean, uh, this whole idea that gasoline is, oh, it's only three ninety five. dollars Well, you. in comparison, you know, you said Hawaii was expensive. I I'm saying to myself, how come they can get gas to Hawaii when they make it in California and the I goddamn gas Wait a minute. is they, the same they price as Hawaii? They make gas all over the world. Yes, but you don't. You don't know. Right you, don't, the Bay Area. you don't know that they don't have gas production in Hawaii. I don't think they do. But they, they, as far as um, gas production, uh, you know, in the Bay Area, we got Chevron, we got Shell, we got a, a ton of uh, producers, and they produce a special formula for uh, for the Bay Area for know. California. I, I know. I know. Well, yeah. maybe in Hawaii, it's come on, I want to lay a gasoline. I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, no, no, it's the same it, shit. You know, in Hawaii, it's the same in Hawaii, shit. Tesla's coming out with a car that runs on the lava. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know. Yeah. How much you, you paying? About Wait, hold on a second. How much you paying for gas, Josh? Two dollars. Uh, I want to say it's a, it's around three bucks. Around three bucks. I mean, it's like two eighty five maybe, mm -hmm. and then occasionally it gets up just over three bucks. You know, three oh five, three ten. So it's thirty so. percent more in yeah. California. I mean, yeah, I've I'm seen it here get, recently. I'm going to get our all cartel and start tapping the lines in Richmond. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I've seen it as cheap as in the, like the two sixties here, maybe in recently last year. You see her whatever, eyes but... roll out of her head when you said that. I mean, that's uh, yeah, yeah. How I much think is it goes gas? up? Hmm? How much is gas in New York? I have no idea. Because I, because I, I don't, I don't have a car, and that's a good thing. And so I have no idea how much it costs, to be honest with you, you know. So uh, that's it. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Now, now the other things that are expensive in Hawaii is the tourist places. I mean, if you stay out of them and dive off the beach, it's yeah. it's four bucks for a tank of air. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's yeah. I, know, I got a thing now where my my mouse keeps saying it's disconnected and it's not disconnected. <laughs> I I give Your up. Your mouse is stuck in a That's mouse. That's one crack. of the reasons I'm giving up on this. See, we only have three people here. See this? See this? That's what I was talking about. We only have three people here. Well, the holidays. No, you know, don't you, give we, me the holidays. But, no, I, I, you can have all the excuses you want, but it's just people don't give a shit about this program anymore. That's really what it's all about, you know. Well, I don't know. I don't know that that's true. Uh, I think maybe they're tired of the low-hanging fruit, and uh, we, we should just discuss other stuff. You know, no, you no more. What Trump. do you mean the low-hanging fruit? That's when the numbers go up. With Trump? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we talk about politics. Let's talk Trump. Yeah, well, I don't. Yeah. I, fuck that. I don't want to. You know. <laughs> yeah, people have burned out on that. 
you know, uh, even even Democrats, <laughs> you know, OK, he's impeached. Well, I mean, it's just gone on for so long that, you know, that people are just daunted by it. Are you bored by it, Josh? <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm bored. I mean, it. It's, the process takes a long time. I mean, I'm not really I'm not bored of that. I'm I'm just I'm tired of Trump. I mean, you know, I'm, I don't know that I'm tired of the impeachment deal. I'm, I'm fucking tired of Trump. So, I mean, I'm I'm okay with you know, the way that it is. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen the remainder of this term anyway, whether he's removed from office or not. It's just going to be, you know, as soon as this shit gets over with in another six or eight weeks. I was thinking yesterday. Regardless of the outcome, stay, <laughs> stay made till the election. I, I don't know why the uh, why the Republicans are so uh, unrelenting in their uh, in their defending of him, when in fact, if he got impeached, there'd be another Republican in there. You know, it's not like all of a sudden they don't own the White House anymore. You know, right? Can so, you can you ask the question? Is you know why? Uh, the Democrats are uh, so, uh, you know, uh, unrelenting in their yeah. They efforts feel it, to, they feel it's their duty as as congressmen to defend the Constitution of the United States and all that engenders. And uh, that they, wait a minute, let me finish. Let me said, finish. Let me finish. Uh -huh. They they believe and they believe I think rightly so that it's their job that if they see a malfeasance of office to bring it to account. That it is their job. If they don't do it, then it becomes the norm. Although they've been trying to do it for two and a half years. So uh, even Pelosi said today uh, to a reporter, she says, you know, we've started this process two and a half years ago. Uh, so that that's kind no, of a No, I think slip. the reason she said that was to say we didn't rush to judgment. You know, we did no, take our they, time. I, we yeah, did take I our don't, time. I don't know that the... The Democratic Party has been trying to impeach Trump day one. I mean, I, I think that's really baloney. I think there are four or five idiots within the Democratic Party who wanted to impeach Trump, you know, the first day. And I called them idiots because I think that's what they are. I think Maxine Waters is a fucking idiot. You know, I think a few of the people who hang around her on a regular basis are fucking idiots. You know, and I, I think after a lot of the shit that went on, it was... You know, no, uh, no one was happy about it to come. And then I think when the moment arose, they reacted appropriately. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't see this any different than the fringe people that are in parties on both sides at almost all times. I mean, there were Republicans at well, I times would, I, calling yeah. for, you know, President Obama. To well, be I would impeached. like to, I, mean, I would know. In fact, I would like to no? throw at Phil the fact that John Boehner was quoted as saying that our first job as, uh, as, uh, con as uh, I think he was, a, what, a congressman? He, uh, oh, he, a uh, wasn't he the Speaker of the House? Uh, speaker, uh, 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 he, 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 speaker of that. He was, oh, he was yeah. the Speaker of the House. Yeah. Speaker of the House. He, yeah. said, he said our first job is to, is to make sure Obama doesn't get a second term. I mean, from day one, they were out after Obama. Okay, so don't blame well, the Democrats I, for doing the same thing to Trump. Saying that you don't want somebody to have a second term means that you want to vote them out of office. That doesn't mean that you want to uh, 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 have a uh, an impeachment uh, over well, over a conversation. Well, you know, that I really mean, how how doesn't rise? Can you blame them level? for being mad? After all, the Democrats did win the le last election. By three no, million don't. votes in the popular vote. I know you're saying that the Electoral you're, College you, doesn't count, but if you're president of the United States and you know that three million more people didn't like you than like you, you know, and that you got into office with a minority of the popular vote, that can't make you feel very good. But Trump this is such happened. an egotist, he lets uh, the fact that he won on the Electoral College uh, uh, hey, that's rule what the he day. had to win on. You know, getting across the finish line is you got to get across that, uh, the finish Phil, line. Phil, you still can't argue the fact no. that that somehow the electoral college should equal uh, a somewhat an approximation of what went on in the popular vote. And this is the second time I think in the last what ten years or something like that right. that it hasn't come out that way. And I think we have to question that whole system. No. 
because the Electoral College is working. It's protecting. No, no, it's because uh, somebody is using it to game the system. Uh, how can you use it to uh, game because, the system? Uh, they, you know, because Hillary because could have gone because to they Wisconsin. gerrymandered those congressional districts, and by gerrymandering them, that's what caused. Oh boy, do you! Wow, wow, wow! <laughs> what did we just see there? there? Huh? huh? You got a shot. Was that a bra or is that a swimming suit top? I think it's a sports uh, sports top. bra. Yeah. So, uh, all right, you know we we we've, we've beaten this to death. How about Jersey City? You know, by the way, my charity that I'm involved with, the Stephen Stiller by the way, see, Towers. See, only three people are, are on the show now. And you watch, it's the way it's going to stay. Well, uh, uh, they Patrick's were... Patrick's calling in a minute. Those uh, guys that. Uh, that they uh, that went in and shot up the, uh, the uh, market, the kosher market, I guess were trying to shoot up the yeshiva school next door, and there were 50 kids in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason, they got forced into the market. Now the uh, detective hey, that don't they, put it on. <laughs> <laughs> we want viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would up the viewership a great deal if you just and kept Alex that thing. It's not, uh, you know, uh, 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 he would definitely, you know, he'll use any method to get viewers. And I, I, and by the way, by the way, I almost forgot how big those puppies are. <laughs> then again, I didn't remember. I did remember how big those puppies were. So anyway, <laughs> how could you forget them? <laughs> yeah, they'll send you a Christmas card. Uh, yes. Uh, well, anyway, uh, you know what happened in it's, Jersey see, City. Phil doesn't care. Phil doesn't. His apparatus is kind of like. <laughs> I, I, I I got somebody, and if I look, she'll you know cut off what I got left. <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, I yeah, those Filipino women are all alike, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good with knives. <laughs> Good with knives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so nobody wants to talk about dead Jews in in Jersey City, but uh, you know, you. Well, what, what I can't. Well, I, I'm, no, I, I was just but before you switched over there. Look, a little bit, though. I was listening. You know, you're breaking. And I understand up. some of the defense that you know. And, and what's that? Okay, you're breaking up a little oh. bit. Uh, can you put yourself closer okay. to your Wi-Fi? Can you hear or me? Something? Yeah. Yeah. You, you got, got me now. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. You. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. I was just gonna say. You know, I just heard you guys talking about how you know the numbers seem to be pretty steady that only fifty percent of Americans are in favor of impeachment and removal. No, no, and I mean, can I correct uh, that? Uh, can I correct that? Uh, yeah. That was 50% of independents. This was a survey, Quinnipiac okay. and Mon Mon Montrose or something like that, yeah. were the two surveys that they cited, and it was of independents. Uh, uh, okay, have, and, I, and I have seen some national polling that shows that the number among, you know, all Americans... Hovers around the same threshold, forty-eight to fifty-one. You know, right, right in there. So I, I guess I'm just saying. I mean, some people think that I guess that is a a good thing for Trump, but I mean, I mean, so, but you're telling me so one of every two Americans would like to see him, you know, removed from office. Yeah, so, I most mean, of the time when. You know, well, I mean, well, just no, Obama just, never had one of two Americans literally saying, "Yeah, let's let's remove the guy now." I it mean, was never the, as divided Bush? under Obama as it is now. Well, because, you know, because he brought the country together. Uh, not necessarily. I he oh, certainly oh, didn't oh, do anything uh, for the Israelis. And, 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 uh, I oh, mean, uh, who gives a shit it, about it, the it, fucking? It, hold on a second. Who gives a shit about the fucking? Are you an Israeli? I no, but I support. Well, them. then go move there. <laughs> Otherwise, be a fucking American. I am an American, but I can support uh, the state of Israel because I'm also a Jew. I, I don't support the state of Israel because I don't consider it the Jewish state. I consider it the Zionist state, and I don't like Zionism. Well, I like Zionism. Why? Explain Zionism to me. Uh, Zionism, uh, Zion, uh, they feel that the land is, uh, should the Jews should return to the land. Uh -huh. After, and, after uh, how long? Hmm? After how long? No, it's been 
a couple thousand years. Yes, well, if you moved out of your house for a couple of thousand years, and when you came back, there was somebody living there, you'd have a pretty hard time convincing everybody that you still owned it. Well, they were the people that were in charge gave them the land. Who you gave know? the people who were in charge now, gave who, them the who land? Who gave no, Jordan they the land? Who gave Iran? Who gave Saudi Arabia? Who who gave They've been Yemen? living there for centuries. That, no, Nobody so gave the it to them. They lived there already. Look, it was controlled by the British. And, and the British and, controlled everything. They controlled India. They controlled the Middle right. East. You know, but before that, they didn't control it, and after that, they didn't control it. And so, who was gave there? So, who gave the Jews? Who, who gave the Jews or, Israel? The British, didn't they? Was yes. Well, it was wasn't there theirs. Jordan it wasn't theirs to than, give away to anybody. They simply appropriated from <laughs> the people who were there to begin with. Hey, they they. Conquered it, took it over from Bullshit. the Turks. I, I dislike the Israelis immensely because they are the most obnoxious group of people in the world. You ask any woman who's ever gone and, out with an Israeli, and, and, Israeli and, man, and, and she will tell you that he was an asshole. Uh, I can tell you that there's a lot of obnoxious people uh, uh, in this world. Have you ever gone out with an Israeli man? Uh, 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 nope. 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 No. Okay. No. Have you heard about Israeli men? Nope. Oh, okay. All right. No. Yeah. Uh, they can be difficult. But <laughs> you know, so can an Iranian. So so can a per, you know a Persian. So can, you know. I mean, that whole area is full of people that are want to kill each other, and they bring that mentality to mm -hmm. a peaceful place like Jersey City, mm -hmm. where you know <laughs> they just shoot them up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the. the the guys in Jersey City, they were the same group that uh, uh, the uh, the kid wearing the MAGA hat uh, from the Catholic University, uh, they were being taunted. Uh, those kids uh, were being taunted by, by the, black, the, the uh, black Hebrew. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah something. And uh, I guess that's what this group uh, was affiliated with or belonged to. And, uh, you know, they, they're terrorists. Well, what have we done to fit, piss people off? <laughs> well, uh, listen, you know what? I just want to choose somebody you know, else once I in a while. I was thinking, boy, if Sean's father knew that we were going to be celebrating Hanukkah, he would. It's one of the reasons I don't speak to him anymore, because yeah. he's a anti-Semite. Did you convert? What, to anti-Semitism? yet, but... <laughs> You know what? I'm going to support. I mean, you know, I've read the Bible. I also read Flavius Josephus, the Jewish antiquities, the Jewish wars. I also read Tacitus, you know, all the Roman stuff. And so when I went to Bible study, I'm sure these broads were like, oh, my God, get rid of her. Because I had questions. Well, how come said, the Jews really, have Christmas? such a... Hey, Kathleen, how come the Jews have such a hard time selling Judaism? We, we got no hell, right, Alex? No, we got no hell. No hell. Yeah. Uh, they usually talk positively, uh, especially if they're yeah, trying but, to raise but there's money a for problem. building. There's a problem with being Jewish, though. you got to yeah, give up that? pork. No, you don't. I love pork. You can be reformed, like me. You know, I have a friend well, of mine who has a farm, and I will never eat pork again. I mean, especially when you can throw a dead body in there and those pigs will just devour it. Uh-uh. Well, that adds hey, to the taste. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're selling all our pork to, ch to China. Wait, 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 Josh? You got to go door to door and start publishing your own magazine and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, Jehovah's Witness kind of deal. I mean. Yeah. JW's. Door, oh, hey, you know? They're just like the Catholics. Well, I'll tell you, I'm basically an atheist, and the reason I became an atheist was because I just saw that the, the problem was is that uh, uh, religion is what has literally ruined this fucking world, okay? Well, of course. You know? And it's extreme religion. Yeah. Okay, listen. So I go to my parents' house, and they have a, gra a graveyard on their property. And one of the founding fathers of Golala, there were two um, 
There were two places you could bring your ships in. It was either Robinson's Landing or Bourne's Landing. And Morton Bourne, Bourne's Landing, is on my parents' property. So when my son and I would go up there, we'd plant roses on Morton Bourne's grave, his daughter, who's 18, and these other graves. And so one day I went up there and I said, hey, Morton, you know, my son and I are thinking about moving up here. What would you think? I swear to God, the next day in front of my damn suburban, there's this huge tree house. And I go, holy shit. And so my dad goes, yeah, holy shit. He goes, that thing's got to be about 25 pounds. So I go up to it and I pick it up and I go, holy shit. And I tell my mom and my mom goes, well, you've got your answer. Uh, you know, so, you know what? I truly believe there's a thin veil between this world and and the next world. So you, know, you mean I to say, Kathleen, you mean to say that uh, people that go up there are dying to get in? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but it's like one time my son, my son and I were up there. I'm up in my parents' room, which is on the third floor. My son's in the basement. He comes upstairs to my parents' room and he looks at us and he goes, I just saw a lady in the basement. And I go, oh. what did she look like? And he goes, well, she was dressed in something I didn't understand. I go, was it old fashioned looking? Yes. What did she do? She nodded to me and I go, Sean, that was probably Mildred Bourne. And he goes, okay. And he goes right back down to the basement. <laughs> I mean, and when my mom passed away. What do you mean you a tree? Know, wait a minute. What do you mean a tree house? Was no, it's not a tree house. Tree. I'm saying it was a, it was a bird house. About a, a bird house. Pounds. Oh, okay. Oh. A bird house. Oh. And prior to my mom's passing, I'm crying and I'm saying, oh, mom, when you cross over, let me know you're okay or I'm not going to be able to handle this. Yeah. And so the yeah. first night, nothing. The second night, she comes to me in a dream. She got her hair cut. Mm -hmm. She's knitting. She hugs me and says, Kathleen, I'm fine and dandy. After that, I felt great. Wow. Okay. Yeah, my mother believes in that stuff. Yes. She Tell really me. does. I'm not joking. Yes. I make jokes about it when she tells me, but she does believe in that. Your mother's a fucking but you retard. Had, Tony, you and when you say mother and dying, that takes on a whole new meaning for me now. Alex. What? <laughs> what? Thank mother you. and dying means unemployed. <laughs> I'm joking. No. Come on. Mother, mother. dad, I unemployed. Uh, years. I'm joking. I'm yeah. joking. You just relax. But but she's calling me now the vix time what <laughs> this is like you couldn't write a funnier skit than tony uh, and his mother she's going to fire him on camera yep but we want to see it we want to yeah. see her on camera a hey, stroller out here you know what yeah. she just said what she just go to sleep it's come she's, on she says you're fired. She said for you to go to sleep? For you to yeah, go to sleep? Yeah, like, you know, come on. It's not even 11. Here, try, I stay up till 2 in the try morning. Try this on your mother. It, I know. It, I try this on your mother. It worked. So it used to work on my mother. Mom, shut the fuck up. Oh, I could never do that. <laughs> you're no. tougher than me. I'd be crying. Naughty, bad Alex. Yeah. But you didn't mean it, did you? Well, wait a minute. If Sean just said to you, Mom, shut the fuck up, you'd be laughing. No, I deck him. He knows better than to say SDFU. Oh, by the way, Tony, Tony, you missed you missed Kathleen in her bra. Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't feel sorry. She'll do it again. <laughs> Want to compare you as with my mom? It's like you pull it out. <laughs> I had to get it the other. Did you wash my bra? Yeah, I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna put it on too. We can trade places. Great. Come on already. <laughs> Oh my God! My sister came over. She sees me with the lens. Now, was that a sports bra you had on? on here. Just don't even ask. Was that a sports bra you had on? Yes. Okay, that wasn't you. you that's not a regular bra. Okay. Hey, your sister's cookies. Yes. Oh my God! Those Look at these. Were the best. Got them right here. What? Why? Well, from the you gotta raise it up, Tony. Oh man, really? Evil. Yeah, really. I'm afraid to eat one. I had one. You could see one's gone, but they're going to be gone later when I'm watching oh, the late show. Oh, you need to eat more. <laughs> I have to do push-ups after I start eating them. I'm going to run around there. I have to start dieting right again, although I haven't stopped dieting, but I seem to be gaining weight even though I didn't stop dieting. Could be stress. 
Could be. It could be that I'm going to do these hormones and I'll put on another 10 pounds. Oh, did they say you gain weight with the hormones? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, because you become a woman. Oh. And, I, and you, you grow. My flesh is I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow tits, and my penis will get smaller and smaller and smaller. So small, I'll get a dent. Uh, can I ask something, since, Kathleen? Since when yes. you were dating Alex, right? Can you imagine, God forbid, if Alex passed away, we'd be very upset, Alex. We discussed this too, me and Kathleen. Yes, I would be very upset. And then, can you imagine all the ex? Glad to hear that to me. the funeral parlor. That would be funny. <laughs> what? That son of a bitch. I would love to hear the no, story. No, you know what? They would they wouldn't dare say anything to me because I'm probably like, I don't know, what, Alex, ten to twelve inches taller than them. Yeah. You have to come see him. He cheated on they me. He, he Alex <laughs> like little short brunettes, and I'm a six foot blonde. Yeah. 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 She, hey, Danny Aiello died today. I know, Alex. I, I was know. upset. I thought I couldn't believe it. He was a friend of a friend of ours. Yeah. Really? Oh. Was he 86? He yeah, was 86. I liked him in uh, Do the Right Thing. Bless his heart for 86. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, everybody, I, I love it when people go, like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, how old are you, Bob? This is on TV. Uh, I'm 86 years old, and everybody applauds. Like, that's a fucking accomplishment. All you had to do was keep fucking breathing. That's oh, all you had to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy, it's wonderful. He's 86. What do you mean? Why, why are you applauding? Didn't the this? producer turn on the applause light? Yeah, but why, <laughs> why, why are you applauding? He's still alive. You know. Oh, oh, I like this one. How long have you two been married? We've been married 10 years. <laughs> oh, shit, everybody <laughs> froze. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Podunk. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. So you know, I mean, everybody froze for a second, Alex, when you asked that question. Really? It was a polder guy. Totally. Everybody freeze right now, and then she'll think there's something wrong with her Skype. What's <laughs> wrong? <laughs> Yeah, that's what you do. It, 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 Josh, if you don't move for a couple of minutes, I have to ask you if you're still there, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's dead. What are we going to do? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, you know, but uh, anyway. Uh, so you, uh, do you ever consider a, uh, do you ever consider maybe just trying a Saturday night show? If you know, take a day off during the week? That means I'd have to be here on Saturday. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, you used to do them when you first started. I just remember they were fairly popular. I don't know. It might be a yeah more people uh, off of work. Don't uh, have to get up the next morning. I might know. open up to different people. Uh, I don't know. Everybody, possible. Everybody's bored with this piece of shit. You know. Well, I, I don't I, know about it, that. That's the way I figure it. You know. Oh, yeah, what the hell? So hateful. So hateful. What? You got to give away prizes. Oh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's why they do it on regular radio. Really? Hey, uh, you know, win this coupon. Well, we should get we should get some female calls the show and, and be topless. That would help. <laughs> you just did. Yeah, it ain't no, she, gonna be me. <laughs> she wasn't topless. She was wearing a bra. She'd be wearing less at the fucking beach. And I was I was going away. Yeah, but you weren't. You were wearing a sports bra. Right? Yes. You know, big deal. I mean, if I wore a regular bra and ran, I would get black eyes. <laughs> well, you know, those are the um, those. Are I the, know it's my burden to bear. I know those are those, those, those are the tits you picked. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. what can I say, hey, this is Friday the thirteenth. Oh, that's right. You know, really? hey, speaking of Friday the thirteenth, Phil and I want to know. Did you have steak on the airplane? Uh, you mean, Kathleen, I always told you. Oh, you mean Tony? Tony, Tony wants to know? Tony, yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> now, on the airplane, I had the chicken wraps. Oh. And, uh, and uh, I had steak in, uh, in Maui. Any I went pineapple? To, like any, did you have any, like? Not I really. I, I, I went to a restaurant called Merriman's, which was uh -huh. just magnificent. A fine dining restaurant. And I went to... Uh, in Lahaina to the Lahaina Grill, uh, both places I had steak, and I also went to Chemo's and I had um, chemotherapy. Uh, steak, steak, steak. Chemotherapy. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
I, I'm sorry. You said you went to Chemo's, and I said you had chemotherapy. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, no Chemo's <laughs> is, a, is a bar on the water in Lahaina. And, uh, yeah. Tony Lahaina and rhymes with this. vagina. That's hilarious. <laughs> you can see Phil in first class ring. Like, uh, Actually, uh, I, <laughs> if I, I had a girlfriend had, in Lahaina, I, I could class. say that's my vagina no. in Halaina. Uh, whatever. Lahaina. Lahaina. Yeah. Lahaina. Uh, Lahaina. Lahaina. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can be Jewish with that huh sound, you know? <laughs> kind of. Well, you know what I hate? Only huhs. You know? uh, 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 I was listening to Jack Bishop one night, and he referred to it as Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, to begin with, Jack, you're not Jewish. All right? That's the, that's he looks started. Jewish. And secondly, <laughs> it's not Hawaii. It's Hub Actually, how it's really pronounced. How's it pronounced, Phil? How how what how what how what Hawaii? No, no. It is pronounced. Repeat after me. Hawaii. No, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Hawaii. I had to learn that because I I worked at a radio station in Hawaii for about a month or two, setting it up. And I, if I was going to be on the air, I had to learn how to how to speak like the like the uh, the locals. The locals. Yeah, I couldn't sound like a howley. Uh, I the, every radio station in Maui was playing rap music or some sort of thing. I mean, I couldn't find any, you know, seventies, eighties, you know, oh. music. Any Nothing. seventy or eighties Hawaiian music? Yeah, Not, I, say, I go for uh, that too. Yeah, Don Ho. Did the music ho. say? Did the music what, 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 what were you going to say? What, use racial slurs and be yeah, demeaning no, toward no, women? No, no, but it was it oh. was uh, a lot of I like you know, that shit. Hip hop shit, you know. Uh, I, I'm, I have no familiarity with uh, the new music, uh, none. Well, I do. That's all I listen to. Yeah, uh, that and Frank Sinatra. That and Frank Sinatra. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I have an overabundance of Frank Sinatra on my uh, iPhone. You know, just be Frank. Yeah, but you know, one time Alex took me to the most depressing movie oh my god really and it was a documentary about louis prima really yeah yeah yes we went to san rafael and he ended up in a coma and i was like oh my god because louis prima and keely smith god how i love them they were great and he ended up in a coma and blah 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 and at the end of the <laughs> the documentary i was ready to hang myself yeah. Well, no, I mean, one good thing about being friends with he, Alex he had is been he would also a, drag me to movies. I think he'd been uh, in a coma for like a couple of years. Yes. Yeah. 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 Alex you know, would the, get the free passes. And, you know, uh, the funny thing with me going to the movie premieres with Alex is depending on what shift I was working at UPS, sometimes I'd just lay my head on his chest and then I'd fall asleep and then I'd just drool <laughs> all over him. Well, yeah, it was good that you fell asleep for some of those movies because they were well yes. worth falling asleep during. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. And then yeah, we also that, went with it, Michael Snyder, so that's another reason to fall asleep. Oh did he get God. you in? Did he get what you in the habit of watching horror. the credits, Kathleen? Did he make you watch the credits? Oh, I love the credits. Well, I, I found that I liked the credits after I understood well, what it was all often, about. Often, often. Well, a lot of times, my brother was in the credits. In the credits, so I liked yeah. The credits. Her brother was in the credits. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, especially if it were, especially if it were like a Lucasfilm. Yeah. yeah. But you know, speaking of Michael Michael Snyder, you know, Tony and I were messaging and we were talking about, you know, people that take advantage, you know, like schnorers. And I was telling them how, oh yeah, oh yes. Alex would take off for the weekend. I was living with Alex and I'm like, okay, tell Michael Snyder that motherfucker. Ooh, don't don't mess with the remotes. Don't F with the computer. Or I will kick that man's ass. Ooh. Oh, see, that was nice of you letting him crash in the apartment, Alex. What? Well, what? he'd come over and they, he'd want to, you know, he'd want to watch because Alex had all the satellite. Oh, so so had, all it, yeah, and I also, I had a, he, all he, the shows. he had a place on my couch he felt was his place on the couch. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if anybody else was sitting there, it would drive okay. him crazy. It was like Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. Was yeah. that the same <laughs> sofa? That, Alex, was that the same sofa you had in Sausalito? No. 
No, because oh, I slept oh, on the one that was in Sausalito. New, when Alex got his new apartment, which was back to back with his old one, he and I got to pick out all the furniture. Yeah, we uh, we you know I uh, I had a lot of money then, and yeah. so I had two apartments in the same building. Yep. And one I used as an office, and one I used as a, as a living space. Yeah. yeah. So, and that one we furnished from top to bottom from the beginning. Yeah. Yep. And I gave that couch away. I gave almost everything away when I left because, you know, how yep. old was I going to, you know, schlep it out here to New York? Exactly. You know, so. But Mike would come over and make himself home. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and if you sat in his place, he went crazy. Hello, Patrick. You've been very quiet. Well, there wasn't for me to interject in sports bras, um, <laughs> Zionism. Um, <laughs> there, we almost had a little yeah. bit of peak there. We had some cleavage. Had some cleavage. Um, uh, no, what I was going to say is that, uh, oh, I wanted to mention to you, uh, now, to begin with, you know, Kathleen's brother worked on all the more recent Star Wars films, right? Mandalorian. And she's doing The Mandalorian now. Yeah, I heard that last night, yeah. Yeah. Is there you, uh, one what? coming out this week? What? Uh, another uh, is, is, is Lucasfilm, I think. Oh, there, yeah. yeah this is... It's the last, finally, at a fucking movies. The last of the bad ones. Anyway, um, the bad ones were the last six, actually. Um, they, but have you have you seen The Mandalorian at all? Have you had a chance? No, I, I refused to get Disney Plus. Well, well, let me tell you this, okay? And, you know, I can have a certain amount of people on my account. Maybe I'll put you on my account or something. I don't know. Anyway, you would love The Mandalorian because it really goes back to like referencing the entire first Star Wars. It's like all the things from the first Star Wars, all the little droids and things like that, the ones running along the floors, you know, the little mice, the kind of robot mice, things like that. I mean, it, 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 it rather than try and uh, uh, come up with new stuff, they really went retro with this. And it's terrific. It's really terrific. And her I've brother... Heard, huh? Okay. I've heard good things about it. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really works. It really works. You would like it. You would be very happy with it. You know. Yeah. The, there's a headline here that says people are lining up uh, a week ahead of time uh, for the Star Wars uh, movies. They're, they're camping outside yes. the theater. Yeah. Why? Uh, I don't know. But... Uh, uh, let's see. I, I binge watched uh, M Mrs. Maisel, yeah, uh, oh, okay. and just finished that. Terrible, uh, terrible. Actually, it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, it was, well, it wasn't as good as the other seasons. Yeah, well, then it was. Then it sucked. And you know, <laughs> my daughter just got hired by Amazon, uh, and she is going to be working on the Maisel show, uh, doing a promotion. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, she she was she got the job out of like ton of applicants uh so anyway but she's not uh, talking to you anyway so it doesn't really matter uh, this one this, she'll message me occasionally yeah i'll get an okay or fine yeah uh, the other one doesn't talk to me the one in canada yeah the but, one, that, uh, one that refers to is a fat fuck right uh, <laughs> well she's not fat. no who refers to you as a fat fuck oh yeah probably yeah <laughs> who are uh, you fat shaming you no, Fat they, bastard. Lauren's too nice to do that. You know, she's a good girl, but uh -huh. uh, she just doesn't like me. <laughs> you know, she doesn't want to spend any time with me. She wants to spend time with her friends. But uh, then I also saw on the plane uh, the uh, riding in cars. You know, the uh, uh, in the rain, uh, uh, car or driving in the rain uh, with dogs. Uh, what? That one was pretty good, what? actually. What's driving yeah, was, in the was, rain was, with was dogs? Cool. Uh, it's on Netflix. Uh, mm -hmm. But that was one of the ones that they had. And I, Riding I liked it. in the rain with dogs? Yeah, driving <laughs> in the rain. I have a question. Yes. Maybe it was Tony, walking in the rain with the dog. What are you eating? Oh, I eating was cookie. at Alex's favorite store. It's a banana cookie. bread. <laughs> I went to BJ's, Alex. Seven dollars to get all this. Bread. Yeah, good for you. I can't eat that shit. Put it away. Damn okay. it. You'd want to get a BJ, not go to BJ's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So, and plus, uh, co- it's a competitor of Costco, and that uh, you know, oh, I'd hate to have be, Kathleen to Who pimp, cares? pimp slap you. I want some. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then I saw yesterday. Uh, that one I, I enjoyed that too, and I saw yesterday the, was a nice uh, picture. Nice hmm? pic. Yesterday what? was a nice picture. Yeah. yeah, it was a very nice picture. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, it's unusual. Uh, you know, music when a guy and he started doing the songs, and then uh, uh, what was the other one I saw? The um, uh, Elton John one. Today yeah, I, I ordered. That. Today I, I ordered. That. Today I ordered the only Blu-ray I've ordered in years. Yeah. What'd you get? Because I, it's not. I can't find it anywhere else. Let me say I can't. Steal it from somewhere else. Uh, and it's only seventeen bucks. Uh, and what was it? Uh, 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 Francis Coppola has re-edited um, oh, the Cotton Club. Oh, which again, you like it? Uh, yeah, I, just, I love the movie. But he, what he's done is he's re-edited it, added musical numbers, put more mm-hmm. emphasis on the black characters, and supposedly it's a whole different film. You know? I think Gregory Hines might have been in that, right? Yeah. Was he? Yep. 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 Was that in black and white? No. Oh. No? Okay. No, it was in color. Hey, Phil, yeah. how was the Elton John movie? I enjoyed it. You know, it was uh, kind of like uh, him growing up and starting to play the piano and uh, entertaining and some of the things that he went through. It was it was okay. It was good for a plane, you know, on being on a plane. But, you know, uh, my son wants to see that because last January I took my older brother. We were one row from the front stage. To the left, his well, piano was, was right in front of us. Oh my God! Best concert well, ever. Have you? Uh, uh, what was it, Rocket Man or something? I, think. I love it. Well, best it concert I concert. best concert I, mean, I was right in front of us. The best concert I ever intended in my lifetime was Elton John in uh, Barcelona. Yes. I told you really? about that. Wow. Yes. It was just it was amazing, just oh amazing. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah. I think Such he's the little I was hands. Body. How could he play that fast and the the music? And plus, you know, all his original people, especially um, Nigel, mm-hmm. his drummer. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was well. I mean, the uh, the Barcelona uh, concert is on was on laser disc. I think it is still right. available on video, and uh, it was it was just phenomenal because I I didn't realize. To begin with, I was, it was strange. I was one of the first people ever to interview him in the United States. I oh, may God. have been the first. Man, you interviewed It may have been the like first. He had wow. come over from England. He was pushing his, uh, his Dick James label record that he had wow. done over in England. And that's how, how early on I got him. And I, I think it was his first interview in America. And so here I am. We're in Barcelona. We're at the... Uh, the concert with Elton John. We're there with Coke for Coca-Cola, who's sponsoring us over there. And they take us down to the dressing room to meet up with Elton. So we go down, meet Elton, shake his hands. And I said, Elton, you know, I was the first person to interview you when you came to the United States. And he went, terrific. And then he went to the next guy. (laughs) He didn't care. He didn't give a shit. Uh, but uh, I, I imagined, I went, well, how, how, how interesting can this concert be? And then I forgot how much of his stuff I was actually inculcated in my brain. And he'd go through one number and another and another, and everybody was up and jumping and dancing. And, oh, they were going crazy. It was the best concert I've ever been to, literally. Now, well, I you know what? I the whole it. Yellow Brick Road uh-huh. album it was released when my dad was dying. So my older brother and I totally related to the album. So when I heard he was coming out in concert in Oakland, I went online and, you know, and I paid maybe 2000 And so we get to our seats and my, my brother looks down, he looks up and he goes, holy shit. He goes, these are the, these are the best seats I've ever had. Two thousand dollars. They should have given you the seats. <laughs> but you know what? Never yeah, had I seen so many old white people in the Oakland Coliseum. Wow! For one concert. Wow! You know, I it was thought, phenomenal. You know, he in the movie he played Pinball Wizard, and he I always that. thought that that yeah. was the Who. It was. He did. He, he played Tommy. Though. Yeah. Did he do Tommy in Broadway? No. I thought he did the music he for did the, movie. You know, I, the movie. The um, movie. Did he? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, I I didn't I didn't realize that. What did he do? Did he write that? Or uh, well, not write it, but oh, uh, right. uh, uh, introduce that song, and then the Who picked it up, or he, was it the uh, no? That was Alice. I think right, Alice. He he just uh, he did uh, um, you know he just did a thing. He he did uh, um, um, he, he did the he he just did the movie, and he yeah. played. He did Pinball yeah. Wizard of the movie, but that wasn't his. Oh, okay. But it was one of the songs that was performed in his movie, The Rocket Man thing. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So, you know. I was just wondering what the connection was. Oh, I would uh, I would like to go see him. I'd never seen him. My, me and my sister would like to go. But that, to me, he's like, oh, forget it. I would go crazy. I mean, were you nervous when you meant to meet him a second time, Alex, or no? Well, I didn't meet him a second time. I mean, the first time, were you nervous? Oh, oh the you second know? time that when I met him at, in Barcelona. No, I wasn't nervous. Why should I be nervous? Was I figure he's such a such a big star, like entertainer? Yeah, well, that's so. I'm, should I be intimidated by that? <laughs> but you know what? He had such tiny hands. Really? I could not get over how fast he was on that piano. Chubby was little such... hands too. Maybe yeah, he's really exactly, Donald Trump. Oh, stop! Totally. Off a big... Trump has no music. You have to have a good reach to be a good uh, piano hands. player, right? Yeah, like Trump, Tony. Totally. <laughs> Let me see here. Tony. <laughs> Tony. Yeah. I've got to get this. Last that. night, yeah. I wanted to say penguins. I was ju- yeah. jumping through the phone. Nuns mm-hmm. were penguins. Mm-hmm. And tonight, all well, this Elton John got me so excited. Mm-hmm. I had to phone. Yeah. Yeah. Tony would have said, and said Oh, I go crazy for it. Forget it. I have, I have wizard. the wizard. Where were you when the Who wrote, uh, what was it, Tommy? Phil, it was Tommy, and the Who wrote it. Yeah. And Pinball Wizard Rock. was Elton John's. Well, what was that all about, everybody? Well, well, he did it in the movie. Played the part in the movie. Right. The there was a movie where okay. Tina and Turner he performed, and it was performed yeah. in Rocket Man. That's, yeah. That's, I mean, Tina know. Turner sings in that film too, but she never sang whatever that song the was. She never. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. There was some other crazy movie they made after that, but. I didn't like that thing that you liked on the airplane, Phil. Uh, Which one? It was like, you know, the driving, driving in the rain, driving in the rain with dogs. If you like to hear Elton John's songs, <laughs> it was good. That doesn't even yeah. sound like a movie. But if you want to, like, see a biography, I thought that Freddie Mercury thing was a little bit better, you know. Well, it was different. The Elton John movie. Yeah. You know, because I expected well, a lot more of the end of Freddie John Mercury, movie. both my son and I started crying when they started at when they ran the credits and started showing mm-hmm. the real films of Freddie Mercury. My son right. and I lost it. Because, you know, I remember Live Aid like it was yesterday. Mm. I couldn't believe it had been that long ago that Live Aid happened and all that, you know. Yep. All we just sudden, thought, like, what a waste. God, did we yeah. lose a great mm-hmm. performer. I liked him better when he got the mustache because, you know, th- those teeth kind of look fake the way they made him have big teeth. But well, he but he had big teeth. He did have know, Mercury, did the like actor. Austin Powers, yeah. Alex. Huh? You know how Austin Powers, you know, like they gave my. But Myers you know what? I like the fact that Freddie Mercury never corrected them. That yeah, he right. Because it was a natural voice. voice. Right. It was yes. But I never knew he was a Farsi Indian. I love that came out. I never knew that because he was so odd looking. But I never knew. You know, it's funny. I never, I, I never was crazy about Queen. They seem like they got bigger when he passed away. I mean, I liked Queen certain stuff. Oh, I love Bohemian Rhapsody. He was underappreciated. Yes, Bohemian Rhapsody. I used to sit in my ceramic high school art class, and when that would come on, I loved that. You know. You know what? You know what I remember as a kid. Everybody in my school, I liked Queen and I liked Elton John and stuff like that, and I liked all different things. But I remember when they did a certain album, I, they a lot of the kids said, "Oh, they're going disco." I guess they were always experimenting. Queen. What, Queen? Well, the heavy metal bands always sounded the same. I used to say these bands, like in the eighty hair bands, they were all interchangeable. Really, you could say, "Well, who's that?" They all sound the same. Yeah. Right? Queen, when they did a certain album, they're oh, they're trying disco. No, they were just trying to change their sound a little bit for the album. So well, I graduated high school in 1982. So I played basketball from junior high school on into college. So in high school, we used to warm up to we are the champions because right. boom, boom, we boom, were boom, the boom, champions. Boom, boom. That was great. Yeah. That movie, how they talked about how they, you know, you know, put that yep. song together. I was sitting in, you know, the movie theater. Boom, boom, boom. 
Oh, you kicked your feet. So crazy. <laughs> That yeah. was such a great movie. Although, you know, some people didn't like that movie a little bit. But. And, and you know, it's even amazing. Uh, and I, from what I remember, you didn't realize how sick he was probably on stage yeah. doing Live Aid. Well, that was like, still how that it was, though. It's a great movie to explain AIDS to people, like how nobody knew what it yep. was, how you got it. It was scary, right? It was crazy when mm -hmm. AIDS first started, right? You lived in yeah. San Francisco, you knew. Oh, they were gone, yeah. yeah. No, mm -hmm. do you know what? For me, it was Rock Hudson that made me really realize how horrible right, right. the mm -hmm. disease was. Because, you know, uh, what was it, Rockford? Right, right. Jim. Jim. Oh, what's his name? Yeah, yeah. What's yes. His name? Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. And I remember my mom telling me, oh, yeah, we all knew. And then Jim Neighbors and all this other blah, blah, blah. Lou I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was in shock. And he t went to his grave denying that, you know, he had AIDS. Oh, uh, Jim Neighbors? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he Jim had AIDS. I didn't, too, right? I didn't know that he had I didn't AIDS. Know that. You see how many people died from it, and, they, and you know, before they even had a name for it. So there was probably yes, a name. But they didn't really have a name yet. I they mean, my die. mom was a nurse. And so she used to tell me she was an oncology nurse, and there's all these guys. And she said the doctors would not tell us. Wow. And then, I mean, she was telling wow. us how Frank Sinatra was calling certain people. Wow. So there was all this controversy, and she was like, holy shit. So when I was in eighth grade, which was 1977. They used to say Montgomery Clift could have had AIDS, maybe, or something like that. Because, you know, Elizabeth Taylor was big with AIDS, and she loved Montgomery Clift, right? And Rock Hudson. They were her friends, right? Yeah. I remember well, my mom telling us stuff, and we were like, oh, my God, I'll never have sex. What the F? I mean, <laughs> we were in seventh they and eighth grade. They thought you get kissing, remember? Exactly. Yeah. Rock Cousin had kissed that woman on Dynasty, whatever her name was, Linda Crystal or something. Or, yeah. And they thought that she probably had AIDS and everything. Oh, my God. Well, you know what? As a kid and as a female, I thought Rock Hudson was the bomb. Right, he was so uh, manly, right? Yes. <laughs> yep. So what are you I thinking mean, about, it was Alex? Sad. Nothing. Nothing. I was just looking. Oh. I'm having some technical problems with. Some oh, because you're in stuff. the you're in the ether with that blurred background on the Skype. Oh. So <laughs> well, I can get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. I can get rid of that. All I have to do is go up here, and then I go here. And then I go, uh, let's you know, see, here. I just saw that Judy movie because I had to wait until it came onto my Verizon and I just watched it. Mm -hmm. it that was crazy. Like, uh, Which one? This gr gratuitous gay thing into it, like, okay. that she meets these two gay oh, guys cool. in London. Mm -hmm. And they take her home and they have all these Judy plates and uh, stuff on their wall, like the huge Judy Garland fans. Yeah. I, I have a friend that passed away. And he told me that back in the Stonewall days and everything, it was mm -hmm. like, you know, remember like speakeasies and prohibition? Mm -hmm. Like can't the, say that I do. <laughs> in the old days, you know, gay bars, you'd have to like uh, knock on the door like and they'd open it up and you'd say, I'm a friend of Dorothy. And that's how you get into the gay wow. bar. So like uh, Judy Garland was like, you know, the, the patron saint of gay people, you know, when gay people were first you know coming out i, and I used to, to go dancing at the i-beam and the uh oasis and those were all uh, south of market and uh hate ashbury gay you know gay discos mm -hmm. and, and they were fun women like to go to those and uh especially oh, i was a like a fag hag for a while when i was in hairdressing school they used to throw these big wigs on me and take me to gay bars you know yeah I used really? to love gay people did you do the amyl nitrate no, no, I never did that stuff. <laughs> that was in that crazy movie with uh, uh, Douglas, Michael Douglas playing uh, Liberace. Oh, uh, I didn't see that. Yeah. The, Wasn't oh, that on the was plane. Great. you got to see that movie. It was great. I, mean, you I never it. thought I'd like the casting in that, but he really did a good job as Liberace. Yeah. Oh, I watched one other good movie. Uh, I downloaded from Netflix, Under Brother Cover, Under... Cover Brother, Cover Brother 2. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, it was pretty good, actually. It was very. Uh, I watch your movies in Hawaii. No, no, on the plane. 
Did How, Alex oh, because you did the, the crazy plane ride all over the country. Right. Did Alex yeah. ever talk about Irish men? Movies, did the <laughs> what, what were you saying, Charlene? Did you see Irishman? You lost? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You liked it? Or? Um, did I like it? Uh, did you think it was like an amazing film for Scorsese? No, I thought, like? I thought it was terrible. It really? wasn't as good as uh, Goodfellas or any of those kinds. No, I of thought movies, it was. It was, okay. it was like somebody set out to do an impression of Martin Scor of a more Martin Scorsese film, and that's what came mm -hmm. out. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, uh, I, I can see where you would say that because maybe it was kind of forced or something like you know. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, because there were so many lines in it. Like, it was like he was going out of his way to make these lines that would, you know, because in his movies there's so many lines that people know. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't, I didn't, I didn't think it was very good, you know. Uh, yeah, my one friend, she said that, uh, like, the first half of it was unnecessary. Like, it was three hours, you could have cut the beginning a lot of it. You know? didn't like the CGI of making them younger? Usually the CGI I makes them older, with it? De Niro's aging in the movie a little bit. Well, yeah, that's the whole key, is that they were able to make them younger. Yeah, they gave him bent legs. But he still looked old to me, though, at certain parts. They well, then legs. they made him older, especially towards the end. I was like, what? How? I, I, you know what I didn't get? Out? Why couldn't they just cast younger actors in, in De Niro's part? Well, at Why the end, you? if you see that thing. Well, they didn't yeah, want to. They him. didn't want they didn't to. want to, right. But they, <laughs> it, it was disconcerting. <laughs> To begin with, because I, I was like, "How old is he in this part?" I was me and my brother. My yeah, but, like, but if you look, you person. know, there's a lot more to playing young than just uh, doing some CGI. You've also got to make the person walk like they're younger, and, oh, and De Niro, up, De Niro did a terrible job of that. Well, no, he actually, guy up in the store, he couldn't actually, even lift his leg up. It looked like uh, on the uh, interview uh, that they had after the movie. Yeah, they uh, said they asked Scorsese him. mentioned that no, Pacino he said, "You're Pacino. 40. Pacino. He said that to right. Pacino. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but he did, so apparently he didn't Pacino say that to De Niro because De Niro looked like an old man with the young face. Yeah. He did, yeah. Yeah. Because when he beat that guy up, Alex, when he lifted his leg, it looked like he couldn't even get his leg down. There was no force. Yeah. But yeah. brother's like he barely looked like he stepped on the cigarette. Well, I said, come on. You know. That's why I said, why don't you just put a young guy in this guy's part, in yeah. Sheen's part, yeah. and age De Niro. Put the Nero as the dying guy in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. So you know. That's the only dry. I would have did. I didn't. I didn't think it was very good. And it was a long movie, three and a half hours. I was like, oh, you're vague. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, hey, hey, what do you think about that? Oh, I did a bed confession. <laughs> I, like, I took three pee breaks and had a coffee. You, <laughs> what'd you, you say? Really, do you think he really could have been the one that killed Hoffa? And Chopped him up, and that's what happened. Or, or cremated him, and that's cremated. why. I don't know. I just, it was a sucking move. It sucked. You know. They used to say Hoffa was, uh, was in the, at, um, in the giant stadium. In yeah, the end zone, remember? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. in the concrete. He's in the metal lands. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, who knows? But somebody, some, there was a rumor going around, and they dug up some apple field in uh, right. uh, outside of Detroit, like recently, West Bloomfield Hills or recently something. Recently, they mm -hmm. just spent a lot of money on that. The FBI. Yeah, 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 they dug up the guy's field, and they didn't find Hoffa. And nothing, nothing was there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I they, whatever they did to him, they got him good. You know, they, did. they managed to. Um, uh, I liked it though, because I never realized. Oh. Like, mm -hmm. if you watch that Jack Nicholson one, it doesn't really show how he really hated the Kennedys, and it really went into, you know, a lot of more explanation about who Hoffa was. I like the, that the little guy was from New Jersey, um, yeah. and he really hated that guy. And, uh, Pe Pesci? Joe Pesci? No, was he the little guy? I oh, think so. Oh, Danny DeVito. <laughs> he was oh, from New Jersey. Pesci, the little guy? Yeah. And, really? uh... You know, I really went into all that stuff, and uh, it was better than, you know, the uh, Jack Nicholson version. Yeah. So I understand a lot more about Jimmy Hoffa now than I did, you know. But I don't know if I like the casting of Al Pacino as Hoffa, because when you look at the real Hoffa, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't really uh, portray him the way the real Hoffa was. You know, it was a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I was a teamster. I'm so sad. 
Phil doesn't like the unions. My uncle was a teacher. They built the casinos with the money. Yes, they did. Yeah, well, all those casinos in Vegas, right? Bugsy Siegel. Well, that's why right. he didn't want to give them the money, uh, Hoffa. Oh, At least mom. that's what they were saying. He didn't want to remember. They came to him, you got to give us some money. And he was just holding the money behind the scenes. You know what I didn't get, which was amazing? How did Nixon get off pardoning Hoffa? He had a 15-year sentence. He got out in three that's years. Right, How did the country that's let right. that go? They should stop these pardons with the presidents. Mm -hmm. Enough for this bullshit letting these crooks out. Yeah. That'll Fucking happen to Trump out, 12 years early almost. Steak, Tony. They What's fed that? them steak. That was That's a joke, I said. Fucking Nixon. <laughs> I don't think a president should have any pardons at all. Nope. He ain't doing it. Nope. Yeah, Ford pardoned him, yeah. Yeah. He got in, and the first thing he did was pardon Nixon, right? And then you see they one of the perks. It's one of the perks of the job, Tony. They, they got to take that away from too many perks. He doesn't need that perk. Why should he have to? Once they get the perk, he can't take it away. It's kind of like a union raise. Well, come on, Phil. That's it. That was hogwash. I said you got to be get kidding. Off on I was pissed do. off about that. If I, I looked it up and it was true, I said let me see if this is fucking accurate. And it was. I said, I said this is a fucking joke. You they put people be away for pot thing. longer than this guy. Steak and bacon. Give them steak and bacon. They'll do anything. No, you know what it proves. If you if you kick enough money up to Nixon's election, you get out of jail. Money. Follow the money, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, so... Uh, that, that was uh, that was all, you know. So it, it was, you know, it was a fiction about Hoffa. You know, uh, I just didn't. I thought it was just yeah. was not wah, very. Wah. Good, you know, uh, but uh, they say it's going to be nominated for an Academy Award, and all those they guys. Gonna hand be, this to them now. Here we know, go. They I'm, better not beat the Joker because he was it's better. It's like than Meryl Streep always getting nominated. And I'm tired of seeing her getting nominated. She can blow a fart. They give her a nomination. Who? Right. Did any of them ever sleep with Weinstein? Did who? <laughs> that could <laughs> be a Irishman. Movie. I slept. Oh. Oh, yeah. No. no. Come on. I think it's all the fucking you gotta. Yeah. They just, you know, it's gonna be, it's, it's, nah, they get, a, they always push what they want. Yeah. I think if the critics say something's good, don't believe them. Because they're probably paying them off. It's too early. Say, yeah. Okay. It's too early. Like you know, we have to wait. It's too yeah. early for Academy Awards yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a headline here that says too much entertainment is stressing people out. <laughs> too much. You did a lot of well, there is too much entertainment right there now. There is. There yeah. is. There's well too much entertainment. You know. Yeah. I don't know uh, um, much. Yeah. And you have to invest in too much to get entertained. Yeah. For me, I can't sit there for like three, four years. You know, that all these hours you have to put in for some of this stuff. It's like crazy yeah. now. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It used to be easier. It used to be there was no binge watching. You, you, yeah, you, know, you didn't get the whole season. You tuned in on Sunday, and then next Sunday yeah. you get another episode. Yeah, well, exactly. got no hour, more. You know. Yeah, you're right. It was always nice to run to the set to watch you. Yeah, it was. It was appointment <laughs> entertainment. You know, yeah, you had no, an appointment no, to no see it, like Alex's show. Bathroom. You know, yeah. you got an appointment to 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 participate or to listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, I I just think that there is far too much entertainment, and uh, uh, they're all competing for your dollar too. That, that's, Lots of competition. I mean, like if we, you know, we're we're about to get in March. We're going to get HBO Max. What the hell is that now? Yeah, what the hell? Is that that's, a new that's that's uh, HBO on steroids. Oh my God! Now they could have another channel. I mean, Jesus! Don't tell me they got to put charge more for it. Well, AT and T bought a lot of stuff. You know, they bought. Uh, they have uh, uh, all, all the Warner Brothers pictures, all the stuff oh. that Warner Brothers owned. I like to watch. You that know, things. they got all. The I like the Disney Channel. Yeah. So you're right. You know what? I mean, are they just? That's what's going to be. Soon you're going to rip that box out like Phil did and just have your apps. Yeah, but uh, they're going to cost you more than you're paying now for cable. You're right, you and know? you have to decide what you want. I How mean, much already, you, yeah. already, I'm buying. Shows, I'm, I, I'm, I have that fifty-something dollar you uh, 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 Hulu, which I'm happy with actually, yeah, and uh, uh, Showtime, uh, Amazon. And uh, Netflix and uh, YouTube, 
And, and those things keep me happy. You know, be, between those things, I'm I'm very pleased. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't. You know, I'm probably spending uh, eighty, ninety dollars uh, on on that portion, and then another sixty dollars for the uh, uh, internet. But uh, you know, at least I don't have to watch you know the, what you get on the cable is a million channels that you don't want you know qvc no. the chinese channels you know <laughs> not that i don't like chinese tv you don't like the chinese do you but i don't understand what they're talking about so i don't want to watch those i don't want to have to flip flip the channel past them you know yeah yeah. Oh, Were you guys Enough that on about... Netflix, there's a bunch of Spanish speaking movies and they don't mm -hmm. tell you that there's no, you know, it's not in English. And, you know, I don't like watching Spanish movies. You know, sometimes I'm into subtitles, but very rarely. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I want to listen to I want to listen to a show that I understand. Are you guys mm -hmm. talking about those new calls that you, you answer it and it's like, hung, chung, hung, 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 hung. oh, you know, I'm getting those at work. What is with that? <laughs> Well, it's oh, the, the same calls? as cable TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get That's these chi really Chinese annoying. calls. I have no idea why they feel that we're going to want their call. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand a word they're it. saying. Basically, because it's in Mandarin, uh, Cantonese, <laughs> but, you know. I do like my Chinese food, though. If you say the wrong <laughs> word, they're going to deliver food. <laughs> and and, and want a tip. Chinks on Fridays. Huh? What? Nothing better than chinks on Fridays. Wait, hey, 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 hey. Sundays. It's Sundays. Oh, I Jones. love it. Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's, oh, the check game's on. What are the listen, Chinese? Listen, what he, listen what he said. <laughs> listen what he said. <laughs> yeah. Do you, it, Jews or, it, have been saying that on Sunday for uh -huh. years. Well, let's Generation. Go, let's go get some chinks. Yeah. yeah, but it's not yeah. proper any make, longer, okay? They, my mother ordered so much one time. You got a pound chinks movement? You know, uh, hashtag chinks? Yeah, the next time the Chinese guy oh. delivers it to your door, just yell to your mother, hey, the chinks is here, and see what happens. <laughs> hey, you know, they, she said they, the they ate day, half of it on the way the over. She wanted the broccoli really steamed, because when I got a chicken with broccoli the other day, she says, taste it. She gets in the mirror and says, ma, it's just the broccoli. Tell him to really steam it. I don't want it hard. I'm well, going to tell the guy. They, oh, use, they use some phlegm, Tony, and that's how they steam it for you. She's going to steam the food, too. <laughs> but they I eat the shrimp food. before you get them. Tell me, taste the broccoli. It's nothing wrong with it. Wow. Just and you know how you know they ate the shrimp? They leave yeah. the tails in there. But, Phil, you notice, Alex, they never eat that food in the back. That's our American food. They're killing us. And you know what? They eat all this stuff. I worked for the, years ago for the Chinese Food Express in San Rafael, California, and we ate their food out of the I bag that we were delivering. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, shit. I, oh, so when I went true. We, had a little, we had a little staple gun we would take with us, and we would open up oh, the uh, package, sweet. and then we'd take a couple of shrimp out, and then we'd put the staples mm -hmm. back in. And they fed us at the Chinese place. They fed right. us there, all the sh prawns and everything we I want. And food. after working there for two weeks, every piece of clothing I owned smelled of Chinese food. Even if yeah. I washed it, I couldn't get the Chinese food out of it. Yeah. That's but the one thing I love when Indian my brother took me to San Fran was Chinatown. He took me to Chinatown. I was like, oh, my God, it's so nice here. We ate there every month. I was trying to eat there almost every night. He says, enough of the Chinese and, food. And did you use that word? Did you, nice to, did you use you don't that want to word? to go into the kitchens. Hey, did you ever eat at Sam Woe's uh, uh, in Chinatown, Alex? No. Oh, that was an upstairs thing, and there was a waiter there, and he was famous for yelling at people. Really? Uh, yeah, Sam Woe's. It's still in business. Very filthy. Uh, you walk through the down? kitchen, you walk through the kitchen, and then upstairs to uh, to sit down at a table. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the the waiter that was there, very famous. It was He was famous for yelling at people. <laughs> you know, Chinese or no, like, I yell. I don't know what he's yelling. Yeah. But I, I'd eat there, and it was open two in the morning. You could go there. Uh, uh, well, that's yeah, I like Sam Wolves. Chick is wontons. What? What? What is wontons? What were you saying? I remember what, <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. China wait a minute. China what, China. what uh, uh, Kathleen? What were you saying? All right. I would kick him in his wontons. Oh, I thought that? you said she likes the wontons. No. <laughs> oh, you mean Sam Wo? Uh, the Sam Wo restaurant? 
Yeah, if he's yelling at me, come on. He yells at everybody. And that that's if you don't get yelled at, you feel like you didn't get the full treatment. <laughs> the <benefit of> it. <laughs> no, we used to walk through Chinatown like uh, when it was like Fourth of July. This is like in the seventies and early eighties. What, what Chinatown? Yelled, San Francisco yell, or New York? Taca. No, in New York, fire taco, fire taco. <laughs> oh, the fire! That was when they would still sell the firecrackers. And we used to go to Wohop. That was the good one that I used to like for duck soup. Mm -hmm. Like you'd get like the duck hacked up and they would throw it in you, there. You know what they right got the in, in, in New York that they don't have out here in the Chinese restaurants what? is those crispy noodles with the duck sauce. Right. And, you know, oh, I can get them. Yeah, the I send them to you, Phil. Oh, I agree. They, yeah, they they don't have what that out here. Yeah, you know? I won't even charge. Well, then it's not Chinese food, food and food fuck them. What's that? Yeah. 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 Well, let's see. Uh, I'll go to Yelp and I'll go to Sam Yo. Uh, Sam Wo. Why, why, why are you looking him up on Yelp? Oh, we don't whoa. give a shit. We're not out there. <laughs> you should order Chinese when you're on the show. I should order a with, uh, somebody, and we needed uh, quarters when the bus uh, still took change. And we're asking the lady, no quarter, no quarter. She was yelling at us, no quarter, no quarter. We were cracking up. We thought that was so funny. It was like, you know, the best we ever had. We would love that she said, no quarter, no quarter. <laughs> it was like entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. It, on Clay Street, 713 okay, Clay. Yeah, okay. It's actually who, got who, three and a half stars. Who gives, who gives a shit? Nobody here can get there. I wish well, I yeah. could. Well, uh, Kathleen can. Well, she, she, no, she lives in Tracy. She's not going to go all the way to San Francisco to get insulted by a Chinese waiter. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> you never waiter. know. Come on. Just How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Put me on speaker, yell at me. Okay. <laughs> by the way, your food stinks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I still don't know, Phil. How does he insult you? Like, does he call your names? Or I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that he's talking to any one individual. You're very stinking American. What do you No, nah, he you know? he just yells. <laughs> I mean, he could be dead. You know, I mean, it's been oh, like a long time Nazi. since I was there. Like that? He's like the soup Nazi from. Sorry yeah, kinda. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Soup Nazi. You know, hurry up! But what was the soup Nazi thing? I forget now what he did. How Seinfeld. He oh, no soup for you. No soup right, for no you. Soup for right. No soup for you. <laughs> I would fly to New York just to see Tony's comic book collection. Ooh, I got a lot of books. How many, take a how many, here, how many here ever oh, ate at the Soup Nazi? Take hours. I don't even know how many I have. How many here ever ate at the Soup Nazi? I never had. My brother did. I did. He loved He loved it. Well, it was Oscar great soup. It, it was That's great soup. Around. It was the best That's soup he ever had. Yeah. yeah. For you. Well, what's funny is that one day, Shecky and I were going to a restaurant right around from the Soup Nazi. Uh -huh. And uh, as we're going there, a guy is coming, and Shecky recognized him. And it was Spike Fierstein. Who wrote the Soup Nazi episode? Oh, shit. And he was going back to have soup at the Soup Nazi. And he said, I haven't been back since I wrote the episode, and I want to see how he reacts to me. Oh, we didn't stick around to find out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great episode. But that, the, yeah. that, that was based on the Soup Nazi because it was right around the corner from the Letterman show oh, where Spike Fierstein oh, worked at the time. The and they kept kidding know. about the Soup Nazi and whatever. So then when it came to writing an episode for Seinfeld, he wrote that episode. Oh, that's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a great he, episode. He made a lot what? of money from getting remember, he didn't, remember George didn't get the bread? He said, I didn't get any bread. Shut up, move on. No, no, he didn't say that. He said, don't press your luck, little man. Yeah, I, yeah. Elaine got back at him. That was yeah. epic. Yeah. yeah. Next. Right, if he doesn't like you, it's no soup, right? Yep. I got them all. Yeah, yeah. I got them all. Be, you know, bean soup. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Next, no soup yeah. for you. Oh, yeah, no, no, no soup for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a friend of mine uh, who was on this show once, uh, uh, Stony Jackson, uh, he uh, made a video with uh, Greg the Greek. Uh, he's a comedian in New York, and it was a uh, video about uh, hipsters buying pizza in in uh, Brooklyn, and. Uh, uh, you know, the, it was basically like the soup Nazi. The guy comes in and he says, you know, uh, where do you source your uh, your uh, uh, 
what do they call it, uh, your sauce. He says, my sauce comes from my grandmother's pussy, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, it, it was very, very, very funny. I think I've sent it uh, to uh, uh, you, Alex, and Patrick, and I don't Remember know if you watched it. Remember that one from SNL? Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, no Coke, Pepsi, you know. Well, I've been getting bored with this show tonight because I've been watching other stuff that's been happening on my computer. I suddenly noticed that we have uh, 36 people watching us. Yeah. See, we do nothing. <laughs> we're a show about nothing. Yeah, we're a show, show about nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, rip, we rip off anybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, Phil, you have any other Chinese restaurants nobody's ever heard of? Steak. Well, uh, well you got any favorites in New York? Uh, uh, no. Well, uh, Wo Hops. Everybody likes Wo Hops down in Chinatown. Yeah. Oh, I've never been to Wo Hops. Uh, 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 who was uh, on ba uh, Bonanza? It was Hop Sing. Now, there there are Hop Sing restaurants around. No, there aren't. Yeah, I saw Hop Sing. I never saw one. No? I never did. Uh, then well, no, you Wo have Hops. been leading Wo a cloistered Hops. life. Wo Hops. Yeah, and then very, after, very after we would eat at Wo Hops, we go down and see the dancing chicken of Chinatown. Yes, I've seen the dancing chicken. You know, chicken, there, yeah. there's another town in uh, the Bay Area called Locke. Which was an Did old. Did you just Chinese... hear me, Phil? What? <laughs> He's like my mother. He talks right over you. Yeah, and he and he completely. Did you raise your hand? He, 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 he figures out what he has to say, and he doesn't care what you say. That's what she yeah. does to well, me. Well, you told like me about some restaurant in New York. Talking. I just didn't hear of it. And yeah, then and then I said after that I would go see the dancing chicken of Ta yeah. Chinatown. How did they get away with that? It must have been put out of business for cruelty. Uh, to <laughs> the tr cruelty to Peter? chickens. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. I think. How do they make them dance? Uh, I think it was electric shock, right, if I'm not mistaken. Right. <laughs> you uh, threaten them. <laughs> you threaten them. <laughs> yeah, we're going to eat you hey, for dinner. Most you... of your listeners go for electric shock. Huh? Yep. Uh, most of your listeners here. get electric Kevin, shock. Kevin, 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 Hog Rider. Okay, let's see here. All righty. We haven't there heard from Rock in a while. There Hope everything's okay. What? Hello there, Rock. Kevin. How are you? Hey there. How are you? Yeah. What do you got here? Coming on at the last moment tonight, huh? Yeah, I saw Phil giving you shit, so I figured I'd jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't care about the ch dancing chicken of Chinatown, for Christ's sake. You know? And the tic-tac-toe chicken, I think. There was a tic-tac-toe chicken. Oh, which I remember I, something about quite that. Quite frankly, I wanted to put that fucking chicken on the hot plate, because no matter how many times you would play... No matter chicken how many times you would play tic-tac-toe with this chicken, he always fucking won. He's <laughs> my chicken. Well, I, there's a trick to tic-tac-toe. Really? You know, it, it depends on what box you no, start no, no, from. No, no, but not, not when you're playing with a fucking chicken and he's beating yeah, you out, kind of okay? Beating. There is no. Did, did you ever lose to the chicken? It, it never won to the chicken. I know, but uh, so you, you, you played the chicken? Yes. <laughs> and after about the tenth time that he was beating me at tic tac toe, I was about ready to strangle the little bastard. Yeah. Yeah. No, you would uh, put an X, and then he would go around, boom, oh, and you bing, boom, boom, and then he'd give you the finger. You know. Where, where was this uh, located? In Chinatown. But did you ever? Uh, in, the place, in the same place. In the same place where the dancing chicken of Chinatown was, where they had this chicken. And you would put a quarter in the slot. And as you were putting the quarter in the slot, the chicken was watching you put the quarter in the slot. Yeah. And you would put the, you know this, right, Charlene? You've been there. Yeah, it gets a little feed or something. Right. You right? put, and so you put the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in the slot. And then all of a sudden, he goes over to a little jukebox, pulls a cord, and it starts playing music. And then he gets on this stage and starts dancing. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another sucker. You know, in Maui, they have roosters all over the place. Everywhere you go, even in the street, at, at the resorts, there's roosters. And it Cocks. Cocks everywhere. Cocks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe for you. <laughs> Good luck, cock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but uh, um, the, the dancing chicken at Chinatown was the best. And the tic-tac-toe chicken, I hated. I just wanted oh. to kill them. Yeah. And they were Could both you video busy. that and have a, have a uh, segment on GabNet of the dancing chicken? This was years ago. It's oh. not there anymore. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure they're not allowed to have that. I don't think the place is there anymore. 
Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it was a place with like pinball machines and ski ball machines and things like that. And then the dancing chicken was over here and the tic tac toe chicken was over here. And, right. you know, I imagine after the place closed down every night, they hung out with each other. I have no idea. <laughs> Sounds like chicken <laughs> shit to me. You know. so. Does any of this interest you, Patrick, that we had a dancing chicken of Chinatown? Uh, if you had one in a wheelchair, maybe. Oh, oh come on, Phil. That's a long, long. <laughs> Even I find that in bad taste. That is a bad one. Yeah. Uh, 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 wow. Would you be interested in seeing the dancing chicken of Chinatown if he existed, Patrick? If he still existed? I uh, know. No. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. No. I think he was probably a main course at Popeye's eventually. Yes. Uh, uh, Chicken sandwich. (laughs) Yeah, what is with this chicken sandwich? It's just Popeye's chicken between two pieces of fucking bread. (laughs) Sean and I. People are killing each other over it. What? People are killing each other over it. Sean and I have not had fast food in over four years. Two years. I love Popeye's. (laughs) You do love the Popeyes, the beans, right? The you the beans? Well, I don't do the red beans and rice because of my diet. And when I eat the Popeyes chicken, I peel off the crust. Oh, but wait a minute! Get Even in. if you peel off the crust, it's... that chicken tastes really great. You know, is it better than KFC? Oh yeah, oh I easily, easily, oh. without question. Because the, the like entire the I was I was turned on to this by Paul Perdome. Who told me you want a really great New Orleans style food? Go to Popeyes. He said because all the people who put Popeyes together were my uh, were my uh, proteges, and they uh, they put together this fast food restaurant. What? what That's the dancing chicken. Oh, and I'll yeah. show you. He's in a he's in a thing here that. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. Uh, um, when you click on the picture, at the, no, that's a tic tac toe playing playing chicken, isn't it? It says beat the chicken. Yeah, I thought it was. Which the, I've often done, by chicken. the way, beat the chicken. But yeah, thank uh, <laughs> the monkey. Oh, it, this uh, it says uh, something about a fortune cookie. Um, they got pictures of the thing, and as late as 2011. Uh, okay, it says. Uh, 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 He'll get around to it eventually. Bag of folks. fortune Just... cookies if you beat the chicken. Uh, so yeah, so if you could, uh, so you know, when you click on it, it's, it gives you an error message. Uh, so beat large, a large, large bag of fortune monkey. cookies. You get a large bag of bag of fortune cookies if you beat the chicken, and then it says uh, thinking booth uh, in, in the back. So you just uh, so, break the glass and beat on them with a with a broom. None of this is making any sense, Phil. This was the tic-tac-toe chicken, and there, there's the tic-tac-toe board yeah. uh, for the chicken. Right, for the chicken, but uh, no yeah. chicken. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, no, there's the chicken. That's the chicken. That, the board that, well, was... Is that the tic-tac-toe playing chicken? That's the tic-tac-toe chicken, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. I, and, apparent, uh, apparently not the chicken I knew. Well, but... <laughs> they ate that chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, see, you missed out on the great days that I was in New York, Kathleen. I would have taken you for a yeah. big night at Wool Hops and then over to see the tap dancing chicken. You know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then we probably tic tac toe with the other chicken. You would scream at him, and we'd leave. That would be a good night in New York City. That's how I showed women yes. a good time. Actually, I would tell women, uh, do you want to see the tic-tac-toe playing chicken? Do you want to see the dancing chicken in Chinatown? They say, you're kidding me. So we would go down. we go to Wall Hops, get ourselves some, uh, as, as, um, as uh, 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 Tony would call it, Asian cuisine. And uh, <laughs> then we would, then we would uh, go down uh, the street, and there was the uh, dancing chicken of Chinatown. And the tic tac toe playing chicken of Chinatown, all under the same roof. You know, pretty cool, huh? Double feature. Double feature. Yeah, we really, uh, we really, we really knew how. I knew how to show a woman a good time. And then if she said uh, a nasty word about black people, I would dump her off in the in the Bowery, and then we I'd go home. 
Don't get money. <laughs> when I was a, when I was in high school, no, my later. first dates used to be Max's Kansas City. I'd say, hey, you want to go out? We'll get some dinner, see some music. And we'd go to Max's. Uh, but that was 1971 and two. Yeah, you know, then probably Marjorie was waiting on you. Really? Yeah. And I was uh, probably. I, I didn't uh, notice. I was just eating too many chickpeas. And I was to, probably there. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. that that was my hangout. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a great place to go. I loved Max's. Yeah, yeah, it was it was good. Uh, I went there because it was just that's where I met up. Uh, you know, I go there to see my friends, right? And they never carded me. I was seventeen. Yeah, you know, but they always let me in. You know, yeah. uh, I had uh, I knew I knew Mickey, and you know, it was it was uh, just it was a great uh, great time to be had by all at Max's yeah. Kansas City. But Marjorie, I believe, was a waitress there in about 1972, 73, somewhere around there. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. And she said she probably waited on me, and she probably did. 17th and Park. Wow. Yep. Yep. But you guys didn't know each other? And what was the uh, month? 73, oh. two, I met Alex. What, and, and, and what did it, what was the motto outside? I don't remember. Yeah, it was uh, steaks, chops, and chickpeas. Oh, yeah. And at every table, they would have chickpeas. Have chickpeas, dried trick. Chick, and and dried the only thing we ever did with the chickpeas <laughs> was throw them at somebody else. Uh, I used to eat them. <laughs> in fact, we used I to have them. these big chickpea fights in the back room. That was the big yeah. event in the back room. That's where all the Warhol people hung out. Yeah. Uh, you probably didn't get back there because they. No, were. no. I I went upstairs, and uh, that's know, where we music. sent. Yeah, that's where we sent all the schlubs. The schlubs, yeah. 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 The, the paying schlubs. The, yeah. yeah. The other schlubs. Yeah. Hey, Tony, what grade were you in in second, 73, 74? Uh, 69, 71. I wasn't in school yet. I was like five. Because I was born in 69. 69. When you're five, don't you go to kindergarten? I don't. Was it five? I'd have to ask my mother. When it's I went. not mandatory. So like, you're 50? Kindergarten's not mandatory. Yeah. You're 50? Yeah. Gee, we've yeah. topped, we've topped out on the to show with 30, 38, 38 people watching, and we've done nothing. Yeah, we've fun. done absolutely nothing, guy. Now we're up to 39. It's the, it's the oh, max nice. story. And, uh, if we sign off, we'll go to 40. <laughs> I like Tony. He's yeah, only five years younger than me. I think I am. I think I don't think I started. I'd have to ask my sister when I started kindergarten. I gotta find my picture. Yeah, I think, think it was Miss Berger. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, there's our theme Thank song, and uh, we we could have hit forty if somebody else had just put the show on, but they didn't. So we're gonna wow. eight jumps. Yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again, I guess. Uh, Tuesday after I see the oncologist. Oh, That'll yeah. be fun. Good Boy, luck. this show we'll is so much days. fun. <laughs> Tell, uh, 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 Josh, you've been kind of quiet tonight, but we love having you here anyway. Uh, no problem. And uh, 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 Charlene, good having you here. Uh, uh, Kathleen, wonderful having you here. Thank Tony, you. Phil, Patrick, you've been quiet too. And uh, Kevin's kind of been quiet, but he just joined us. Um, so that's it uh, for, uh, for, for this week. Um, thank you all for a very nice, pleasant evening. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Uh, would the, all of you give a big uh, kind of like uh, a wave goodbye, and I will give you a wave goodbye back. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel. That's how they roll, and that's how our show uh, rolls for tonight. Uh, next is the in intersection with uh, Jack Bishop, and uh, that will be followed by absolutely nothing, just a lot of 24-7 programming of repeats of everything we've already done, including this show, which went off pretty well tonight. I really appreciate it. In the meantime, as always, I'll see you on uh, Tuesday right after the intersection at 930. At 10 o'clock, we'll be back here again. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>